Welcome to Believe in Chargers, another uh, weekly installment as we cover all things Chargers. Had a little bit of news this week. We'll dig into it. We certainly appreciate all of you as the pod and the show grows. Uh, you're a big part of that. It's it's clicking, it's subscribing, it's commenting, it's rating, it's telling all your friends, making sure you follow the podcast. You get the notification the second a new episode posts. We appreciate you. Uh, share your comments with us. We do our best to, to reply on the various platforms, typically YouTube, where this thing posts. And be sure to check out all your Bally's outlets uh, as this thing airs once a week on Bally's as well if you want the visual component of what we're doing while we're chatting Chargers with me, Lorenzo Neal, the great Lorenzo Neal. Uh, and great to have you this week, Lo, uh, the all-pro, the all-decade fullback that paved the way for LaDainian Tomlinson through part of his Hall of Fame career because uh, the theme of this week's installment is going to be physicality. Um, it's going to be strength. It, it's going to be a brand of football that clearly, based on the pressers we had this week from tight end Hayden Hurst, from Jim Harbaugh, head coach, and from Ben Herbert, the executive director of strength and performance, uh, there was one common thread, low, and, and that is uh, we're going to try to keep these guys healthy. Uh, the exact words used by Ben Herbert were, we're going to make them harder to break. And, um, <laughs> and, and from Hayden Hurst, that we're going to play – 60 minutes of street fight football and there aren't many teams that can do that for 20 games so those were probably the uh the three things that, that just kind of jump out to my head or the thing from each of them that jumps out at me having sat through all those pressers and, and kind of what was preached on the first day of phase one no question and i tell you right now money i love it when anytime you talk about intensity and talk about toughness that's what allowed me to play 17 years in this league 16 training camps year 17 the body gave out but it was toughness and it was physicality, being the first one in the weight room, trying to be the last one to leave. And that's what Harbaugh and the strength coach is going to do. They're going to they're going to weed out guys, guys that you don't you think they can last. If you can't last, if you're not durable, they say you can be algae or mobile, but most of all, you got to be, you know, make sure that you're going to be algebra to be able to play on Sundays. And that's what it's about. And Harbaugh wants guys. You can't make the club in the tub. That's going to be physical. That's going to be in the weight room. That's going to be able to last 60 minutes because it's a long season. But if you think about every team you've seen with Harbaugh, you and I, we talk it in about week in and week out. And that's the thing. There's so many listeners. That, and we, you know, of course, like you said, we appreciate them listening. But it's going to be Groundhog Day with this show so many times this year because it's about physical. It's about, my God, look how they wore them out in the fourth quarter. It's going to be about the second half. It's going to be about, man, training camp. Man, they are intense. They are double days. You're watching. Harbaugh is going to push these men because he knows on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon when they play, the hay's already in the barn. <laughs> right? And I'd love to know, uh, you mentioned 16 years low and, and a handful of teams, and, and we asked this of Hayden Hurst as well, and it's, it's an interesting answer. You know, it, it would seem like every team in, in the NFL, because the margins are slim and the games tend to be very close, there's very few blowouts in the league, even though you have a widespread of, of overall records, the games tend to be a little bit tight. Um, but does everybody operate this way? And if they don't, does it surprise you that they don't? Like when I hear Ben Herbert talk and and Jim Harbaugh talk and, and they're talking about, you know, you want to you want to steal rod in your neck. You know, we got to work the neck. We got to prevent concussions. We got to get traps and we got to get, you know, the neck to be stronger. And, and he talks about the shoulder girdle. And, and I want to make sure there's no rotator cuffs and there's no shoulder injuries. So we got exercise. We didn't want to take care of the neck, shoulder girdle, shoulder, shoulder girdle hip girdle, ankles. That's what he talked about. He's like, those are the three, those are the four impact areas that we want to make sure our guys are hardened. They're harder to break. They're better. We want to protect them. We want to keep them healthy. And to me, when I hear it, it sounds great and I love it, but does everybody do it? Is that no. what everybody's trying? Okay. That's what's interesting to me. Why not? Because it's too hard to do money. I can tell you right now. I, and when I was in San Diego, there was a guy by the name of Paul Vaden, who was a middleweight champ of the world. He would come over, and we would do yes, yes, no, no's. I would train. I would go to the facility, work out. I hired Paul Vaden, the middleweight champ of the world, and all we did was work neck. I'm talking about a guy, 150, 160 pounds, sit on my neck, lift him up. I'm on all fours. I'm talking about yes, yes, no, no's. He said, man, every night, 
money. I'm telling you, I work my neck at least five to six times a week. Land on your back. I tell all kids that are wrestling, ball, look at girls. The most biggest common thing is girls soccer is concussions, using the ball, hitting it with their head because they don't strengthen the neck. And that's what the neck and those traps, they hold everything together. It's and I did the yes, yes, no, no's when you're doing just get a kids and lay on the ground well, tonight, money. When you get ready for bed, lay on your floor and just do yeses. You lay on, right. lift, lift your head off the head floor and just do yeses and no, and no, and no nos. You do a hundred of those, your necks just you just feel it burning. You have to work the neck, the trap, the shoulders, the fundamentals. What they're saying. That's what keeps guys from the concussions. That's what keep guys from being injured. The neck and the traps. I think you know. You look at my career. Not a lot of concussions. Yeah, I had some. But the neck, that's why I wore the big neck. Well, you have to have neck and traps, hips, and what coach is talking about and the strength coach is talking about, it's imperative. Teams don't do it because you know this is a finesse league. You know teams aren't trying to run the ball. They're not trying to run the ball 20, 30 times a game. There's a lot of things that they leave out. But Harbaugh understands the importance of winning and how it looks. But it starts in the weight room. It starts about having a body that is able to endure the 60 minutes that's in, able to endure the 17 game season. You can't just say, go out there and play. And just by just doing the other things, you have to make sure those key components that Harbaugh's talking about, the neck, the shoulders, the traps, the hips, the, you know, the girdle line, those things and ankles, you want to make sure those things are solid because if you don't guys won't last. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's wild. It, it's wild to it me is. that it's not standard, you know, for for every one of the thirty two outlets. And you don't normally get strength coaches provided to you for a media session. But there's so much heat around Ben Herbin. By heat, I mean just sizzle and people talking about him and how important he was to the success of Michigan and the players singing his praises. I mean, it was like they were losing a loved one. Uh, when you looked at the Instagram and they knew they, they weren't going to be able to keep him at Michigan when, when Coach Harbaugh decided to come to the Chargers, just the tributes that they were paying to how important that guy was to their development, to their success, and, and to their realizing of their dreams of making the NFL. We want you to realize your dreams. Uh, it's down to the final four teams. Bet Online has been your tournament bracket headquarters all March long. And now that the finals are upon us, they got a lot more in store. The MLB is here. The NBA is here. The NHL playoffs are right around the corner. Of course, Bet Online, the number one source for your summer sports wagering. So get over to Bet Online today. Stay updated on all the action. And remember, use the promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Why not get a free 50% on your first deposit? Just use that code BELIEVE. Get after it. Bet Online. The game starts here. Um, the one. The one thing that that stood out, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to Herbert last, I think, because there's just so much there. Um, but I want to bring up something that that Hayden Hurst said, and I don't quite think everybody picked up on it. But so he talked about, you know, how, and you could just see it in his presence and the way he carried himself. He was he was smiling. He was talking about physicality, and he's like, "Oh man, it's so good to be back and back in this system with G. Row, Greg Roman, and and the Harbaugh style of football and and." You know, he just called last year with the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, and, and last year was last year, you know, the worst team in the league record-wise. And, a, you know, guys getting fired and OCs calling plays. And now this guy's calling but just that mess. But the one thing he said was, you know, there are very few teams that are willing to play physical football for 60 minutes 20 times a year. And that's the key to me. He said 20 and – he, and he said it without a hitch in his giddy-up. What is 20 times? 20 times is 17 games plus the divisional round, the championship round, and the Super Bowl. And it just, it rolled off his tongue like nothing. He was like, there are teams that might be able to do it for three quarters. There's teams that might be able to do it for a couple games. But there are very few teams that are willing to do it 60 minutes, 20 times in a football season. And that's what this staff is committed to. And if you're not willing to do it, and it's one thing to hear a coach say it, or the strength, you know, and and performance executive to do it but when it's a player and you hear the player say and if you're not willing to do it you ain't gonna be here you'll be gone I think it sets a different message when it's a player who says who he was the only one that said it that way um you didn't hear not hear that from Ben Herbert you did not hear that from Jim Harbaugh it was very interesting that of all the guys 
And he talked about his stops. He's like, you know, it's why I loved where I was in Baltimore. They, they drafted me for a reason. They had me play this way. He said, then I went to Atlanta and, you know, he said, then I went to Cincinnati. I'm back in the AFC North and they're using me again, you know, and I'm back at it. And he gets this kind of lead, lifts his shoulders a little bit. He goes, and, you know, last year was last year in Carolina. So it's good to be back here where oh, this no. is the style of football. <laughs> and no question. You love to hear that from players because I get it. And, you know, there were certain teams that I wouldn't go to. There were certain teams that, you know, hey, look, when I was a free agent, I'm like, well, I know that this is a style of football that won't last, that I'm on the field, you know, five or six plays a game, maybe 10, 15. And they loved the way that I played, but it's just the offensive system didn't fit with me. I remember being in, in, in you know, Tennessee and, you know, and, and, and Les Steckel was the offensive coordinator. Then, and, and, you know, he was physical, me and Eddie George getting after it. And then, you know, brought in Mike Heimendinger and, you know, when he just kind of, you know, wanted to use more of the tight end and knew the physicality. So it was like, okay, you knew that I knew that the handwriting was on the wall. Because when you when you go to certain teams, you got to understand the style of play. And that's why you talk about fullbacks and there's certain things that they don't see them around the league. Because if you don't play physical, and if you're not getting downhill, you're not trying to just come up in this position block. You got to put the fear in guys. You got to be physical. You got to come out and make it hurt. You got to be uncomfortable. When you're playing full, when you're playing that position and you're playing like the, you hear the tight end, we're talking about you know the guys and what they're saying, you know. Because it's uncomfortable. You know that you are trying to cause a car wreck, a car collision every mm -hmm. single time you're out on that field and you're saying, I need to be uncomfortable. I know this hurts my body, but I know what it's going to do to this guy. And that's what guys don't like money. And that's why he talks about 20, 20 times teams aren't willing to do it because the men aren't willing to do it. Mentally, yeah. they don't want to do it. Physically, they can't do it. They don't, they don't know if they can do it physically. And that's why hardball, Unfortunately, there's going to be some good players that you think, oh, my God, this player is great. They're going to they're be here. They're not because they don't fit his style. You have to fit this style. Of you have to love contact. You cannot be a soft guy and play in hardball system. You just can't do it. You have to be physical. you got to be willing to say, I'm going to put it on the line. And, yeah, you're going to be dinged up. Oh, yeah, my little shoulder, my little AC joint. I just go ahead and put a little ice on it, a little stem, put a, you know, put a little butterfly on it, go ahead and get the trainer to put me a little splash on top and put a little plastic on top, and, you know, <laughs> lift up my shoulder pads a little bit, you know, and put a, a little strip on each side so now your shoulder pads elevate a little bit more. And guess what? Go do it again. And then get up and say, man, my bell's rung, and go do it again because guys don't want to see that. And that's what Harbaugh's going to preach. And guess what? Next man up. That's it. You've got to be next man up. That's the way the Ravens play, and that's the way the Chargers are going to play, and that's who hardball is. It's going to be next man up. If a guy goes down, next guy is going to be just as physical because they're going to set the tone in training camp. They're going to set the tone in OTAs. Man, I'm telling you, I'm just getting a little fired up, man. I, wish I, I can could tell, man. I, I can tell. The camera got all shaky and going. Buddy. I wish I could come out of retirement, baby. They, well, unfortunately, they just signed a fullback. Uh, yes. low. They got Ben Mason out of Michigan. They brought him in, and Harbaugh called him uh, one of the most physical players he's ever coached in his life. So, again, wow. it's a continuation of of the theme. And and I'll say this. You know, I, I obviously cannot speak to it like, like you can, Lowe, but I can give you this particular perspective. I was calling college football when Jim Harbaugh arrived at Stanford. So I, I was calling games in the Pac-12, and I was watching Pete Carroll and Matt Leinart and Mike Williams and Dwayne Jarrett and all these guys, and Reggie Bush, you know, finesse back. You know, it was, it was, it, it was he wasn't, Lendale's the guy that did it between the tackles. You know, Reggie was doing it on the edges and, and in the passing game a little bit more. He's exceptional, one of the best college football players I've ever seen. But again, a little bit more of a finesse style. And that's what the Pac-12 was. Yep. It's a passing conference. It was a quarterback conference, and Harbaugh showed up at Stanford and looked around and said, okay, I'm not going to be able to get the wide receivers that USC is getting. I'm not going to be able to get the athletes that Oregon is getting and Nike is paying for. So how do I do it? How, do, how, how can I win games at arguably, not arguably, at the most academically challenged Division I football program in the nation? How do I do it? And he did it with what? He called it, uh, what did he call it? Academic, uh, I think it was academic um, brutality, I believe is what he called it. So he's wow. got all, because you can't get into Stanford unless yeah. you have the grades. Yeah. So he's got smart guys that were willing to commit to that brand of football. And man, he punished. I mean, he punished. He, he, drove, he drove Pete Carroll out of the Pac-12. That 55 to whatever it was, 55 to 10 game, I called it. At the Coliseum, 
What's your deal? What's your deal? We've talked about it in the past, but because he recognized it and, he knew, and, it, and it jogged my memory low because you just said it. You said, you know, when I brought up the whole physicality and why isn't everyone doing it, what was your answer? You said it's a finesse league now. Yes. It's just like the Pac-12. Yep. It's, it's the exact same thing that he saw with the Pac-12. He's like, well, you know, we got all these wide receivers running around. Nobody's running the football really that much anymore. No one's really kind of getting physical with their offensive line anymore. So you know what? Let's do it. Let's 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 do what we did at Stanford and and see if teams have the personnel because how many teams carry linebackers? How many how many teams are playing base with three linebackers out there? You know, it's 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 there for the taking. Right. If you can do it, it's there for the taking because teams are simply not built to compete with it. And and that's the thing. If you think about the old NFL, when you saw Jerome Bettis and you knew Marshall Falk and you knew Ladane, and you, you think about Eddie George and the, that era when you had big backs, guys getting downhill, you think about they always in the league. Now you don't necessarily think about it that way because the league has changed and it's changed because it's more of a finesse. And so if you have a team a la Baltimore, why do you think they're always right there? Because right. they're physical. Why are they always – and, yeah, they need to make a play, whether it's Lamar Jackson. Last year we seen the young rookie, Jaya, the receiver, just hold on to the ball, get in the end zone, don't get the P.I., don't make it about yourself. They beat Kansas City. You owe Kansas sure. City one of the highest-powered offenses, what, 10, 17 points? You win that game. It was not the defense fault. So when you think about – look at the Niners when they're running the ball. When you think about physical teams, teams that have athletes and have a team that have physical guys that can actually – try to do it that can do it and do it because that's their mindset they win they win and i'm that's why it's going to be interesting just to see how hardball develops this offensive line to see who these guys are because we know at times they have to pass block because you know 30 40 times throwing the ball and you're going to have those games every now and then but you're not going to have them a lot this team is going to play physical the brand of football that they're going to do they're going to run defenses off the field you're going to run guys home you're going to make guys curl their tail and quit. I, I remember playing certain teams, and, and and I knew, hey, let me keep going to this linebacker. And you know what? I knew that they were going to turn it down. I knew when we kept running lead draw, I would go to Cam Cameron when he was with the Chargers. A Cam, mm -hmm. run lead. He doesn't want to see me. I go to Hud Hudson and because we were a physical team. You know when guys, Dillman, those guys get downhill, guys didn't want to see it. That's when you had Turner Burner, Mike Turner, who's a physical type of back, and lead behind that. That's what Harbaugh's going to do. And you're right. Teams don't want to do it anymore because guys don't want to do it. Guys get hurt. Oh, I can't do this. I'm hurt. Go see the trainer. They take days off of practice. Hardball's not going to allow that. You're going to see a different mindset in a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys' money because Harbaugh won't allow these guys to quit. He won't allow these guys to lose. And they're either going to have to come with him or they're going to have to find a new place. Yeah, and it's funny if you go go you know check out chargers.com. I've posted a handful of the the videos on my my Twitter feed as well from yesterday and the pressers, but there's some great photos of of Harbaugh in the mix, man. He's doing the push pull with the guys and you can just see him all flexed out and veins coming out of his neck. And and you know, Hurst was the only player we talked to yesterday or was that was made available. It was just Hayden Hurst and then Ben Herbert, you know, strength and and Jim Harbaugh head coach. So that's why I'm I keep bringing Hayden's name up because he was the only guy that sure. we got available but you know he was talking about it. he's like you know the meetings can can drag on a little bit it's an hour and 45 minutes he's like so when your head coach is up there and he's he's talking about the routes and you watch him moving and he's trying to get after it he's like <laughs> it's great he's like you know it it breaks up the, the the monotony of a powerpoint and stuff but like Walk us through that, Lo, in terms of all the different head coaches you had and kind of like what what you would think if you're trying to do your strength measurements with teammates and all of a sudden your head coach hops in there and he wants to go head to head with you. Like, where are you hey, at with that? Hey, hey, I'm telling you, guys look like, what the hell is this guy doing out here? And and, and but he's like, oh, come on, man. And he's serious. And you're like, man, I don't want yeah. to hurt this guy because he's serious because that's the mindset. We had a guy at Cincinnati and we didn't win a Carly game, but he just moved into head coach Dick LeBeau. Dick LeBeau, man, this guy, you know who Dick, man, this guy oh, yeah. is a freaking awesome guy, great defensive mind guy. He'd get out there, hold his old butt, be out there trying to do stuff, be like, Dick, you better sit down somewhere. But that's just any. I had Coach, man, you got to realize, I'm from I'm from the Central Valley. I had Jim Sweeney, at, at head, you know, head coach Jim Sweeney. This oh, yeah. guy would get out there, have his hat, turn his hat on around backwards, go hit, let me hit you. He would drop his, 
money. He would be bleeding. I mean, Coach <laughs> Sweeney out there, 60, yeah. 70 years old, bleeding from the head because he's out there hitting guys and doing it. You love that. As a player, though, you know that your coach is committed. You know that his heart's in it. You know that this guy's trying to show you. Harbaugh's different because he played the game, he knows the game, and he's going to go out there and demonstrate to the best of his ability. But you, 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 you could appreciate that. You could appreciate that, and that's why guys are looking like, "Damn, this coach, he's crazy." But you know <laughs> yeah. what? Guess what? It's going to make them crazy. It's going to make them crazy in a good way because they know that those that cold coaching staff, they're willing to mix it up with you. Yeah, and I think you know one of the things to to remember because. Um, you know, Harbaugh was asked about the draft and he immediately just pushed it off. He's like, hey, when's he looked at Josh and he's like, when's Joe meeting with him? He's like, week before the draft. He's like, that's a great question for Joe. So, you know, he's not getting into the the draft stuff. But but Hurst was asked uh, about Herbert. Well, OK, so how does Herbert fit into all this? You know, you, you've been around it. You're talking about running. You're talking about physicality. You're talking about, you know, getting teams to bend to your will. And and he didn't hesitate. He was like, how's he fit in? It's like, you got them on their heels, man. These guys can't stop us. They're not going to stop us. In our fi- and next thing you know, now they got to figure out a way to stop us. And bang, it's gone. Now it's gone. Now it's over their heads because Herbert's as talented as he is. And, and then they're really now, now you're really conflicted. Because now you know they're going to push it. Now you know they can take that shot. Now you know what the talent is and that you cannot just crowd the line of scrimmage because you've got to slow down this moving train, this runaway train. Because now it's over your head. He's like, you kidding me? He's like, this guy is made for this offense. He's like, the, the idea that he's not going to be throwing it and we're not going to have explosive plays and there's no wide receiver. He goes, that's crazy. He's like, you have no idea how good this is going to be for him. You, you think, Money, you think about it. You remember those Charger days? You had Eric Parker and who else? You really didn't have – I mean, those other guys, Vincent was still young. When you think yeah. about When you think about the Chargers when – didn't really have a great receiver. Eric Malcolm Parker Floyd, was your, Eric, you had yeah, Parker, it, you had Vincent Jackson, you had, yeah, Eric, you had Gatesy. It, 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 and, and Eric Parker was your number one guy. Then yeah. you went on trying to get Keenan, an older guy, you know, that could hold, but Keenan McCardell. So you think about it, it was running the ball. Ladanian, 25, and then Michael Turner, 10. Spro- and we we made you bring down the safety. Now you got to play with eight and nine guys in the box. And, and then LT would still make the safety mix miss. So now you brought another guy down. Now you had to play man-to-man on the outside. And now you had average receivers. Now you got the go route. Now you saw him the big play. You know, Cal- Rochelle Caldwell making yeah. plays because you had to stop the run. Harbaugh saying because of the physicality that you're going to have, you're going to be able to take those shots down the field. You're going to get that man-to-man coverage. You're going to get those windows that are open. You're going to get the tight end able to get open because you can't sit and play these zones because you're going to have to compromise somewhere, and this one guy got to win, and you're going to know where that ball is going. And that's why the average receivers become even better because now you know here's this play action. You know the ball's coming to you. You know you got to win on those particular plays. So you're going to see the sense of urgency go up because now just average guys are going to be called upon to make these plays because because now the system don't dictate because I got a Keenan Allen on the team, which is a great receiver. We understand that. But now it's going to be different. Guys are going to be able to step up and have plenty of opportunities to make plays in this offense because the dorm running game is going to be physical and because they're going to have eight and nine guys in the box trying to stop the run. And that's why Harbaugh's talking about and the strengths talk coach is talking about we have to get physical. We have to be in the weight room because this is going to be predicated on the offense, how physical and the running game has to work in order for this offense to flourish. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, and there's a lot of, of pillars to, you know, to hold the platform that they kind of went through yesterday. It is not just, you know, yes, no's. It is not just, we're going to be pushing 225 more than everybody else. It's, it's not, you know, he talked about, yeah, you can do chest and back and you can do cleans and you can do back squats. He's like, but it's more than that. And they kind of went through not, you know, all the, 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 the secret sauce, but they went through a handful of what's important. I uh, want to remind Believe Nation uh, that we partnered with Cut, social betting platform, peer-to-peer betting platform that allows you to bet directly against your buddies uh, and other fans. You can join the Believe crew on Cut today, bet directly against quite a few of them on your favorite sports, pop culture, politics, topics, y- whatever you want. It is the ultimate put your money where your mouth is platform. And you can follow at CutBet, K-U-T-T-B-E-T on all your social media channels. Download the app, uh, check out the app store, or visit Cut K-U-T-T 
Believe.com. Use the code Believe, B L E A V, for a 10% bonus. Hey, how many times can you put up 225? If you can do it once, you can do it more than me. So you got me beat <laughs> on that. Part. Um, I love you, Matt. <laughs> I do. I didn't uh, see that coming. Oh yeah, I I do want to uh, I do want to just kind of point out though quickly as we kind of start to to wrap this thing up, Lo. Um, you know, of of all the things that were said, the the thing that I felt, you know, like we kind of went through a handful of them, but one thing that really stuck out is the whole attention to detail thing, and how important that is. And you know, the idea if you you don't you know the broken windows theory in New York City about hey if we fix the windows then maybe we you know that's where it starts to clean up crime in Times Square, right? If you got a bunch of broken windows, then it looks like it's a place where you can just commit crimes and nobody gives a rip, right? Yeah, but let's start, you know, that was that sort of theory. And the idea is if you do the little things, then the big things work. And and one thing Coach Bed Herbert talked about, he's like, you know, for instance, we were working with two and a half pound plates today, working on shoulders. And every single guy that stacked that plate knew the word rogue. And there's the word rogue on that plate. And it was perfectly in line. Whether it was the second plate or it was the 10th plate, when we stack those plates in our weight room, because that is where we operate, that is where we do our work, we need to respect the room and make it look a certain way so we know what it looks like every time we walk in. There he goes, those 10 plates better be stacked and that R and Rogue better be in line on every single one. He said, because you know what? If that's in line, then your feet are right when you're blocking, then your eyes are right when you're when you're uh, you know, defending a wide receiver and, and all of the details are buttoned up and it carries over your reaction to that because some people will will roll their eyes and say yeah that's right we're going to win 10 games this year because we're stacking two and a half pound plates and the r is directly in line great uh just kind of if you you know what what sure. your experience is with the whole attention because it's one of his pillars it was one of ben herbert's pillars attention to detail was one of the pillars of what he is coaching it's everything and, and that's the and that's the thing you know when you look at new england patriots and you think about the Patriot way, and you think about Tom Brady, you think about what he demanded. You think about everyone don't like him. We talk about Belichick and how he is. But why were they always so good? Attention to details. It's the small things. Because if you can do the small things, take care of the small things, the big things to take care of themselves. And that's what he's talking about. You know, make sure these plates are going in, in the same. Because those little two and a half, those little two and a half plates can make a grown man cry. Your shoulders are burning. You're doing those yeah. weights. You do 30, do yes, out, outside, inside. You're moving them lateral, hitting the Dorsey plates, turning the arms in different ways. Those two and a halfs will burn your shoulders completely out. So he's just talking about these little things. You do these little things. You have attention to details. You know where your hand placement, feet in the right spot, knowing where your eyes are, placing your hands in the right spot, hand placement, foot placement, all those things. That's why I said if this is always straight, you know where you're always going to be. You know the attention to details. And I think that's everything, Matt. People look at it like, oh, my God, because you got some weights in this place, how is that going to get – how is that going to win? Because now you're talking about the small, minute things. Okay, just because you're one shade, you take about the inside shade. You're talking about man-to-man -man coverage. Guy said, hey, you take away the inside. And just by overstepping by three inches, four inches, he's by you. He's gone. That's little. Right. You're playing head up. Okay, because you took a false step, he's gone. Just those little – and that's what Harbaugh is going to break. And that's why you hear Ben and all the coaches. Everyone's going to be talking about attention to details because the devil's in the details. And that's what Harbaugh's preaching. I'll uh, I'll wrap with this. First of all, I, again, I, I, if you're a Charger fan, if you're watching this, if you're enjoying the little thumbnail that we're giving you, do yourself a favor. Get over to Chargers.com. Watch the pressers. The Ben Herbert one is he's he is an intense dude, man. The 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 question, you know, I asked him a couple, and when when you ask him, he's right he's right there. His, his eyes are he's he's looking at you like this as you're asking him, you know, and um and it's. You know, it's a bit of a staring contest. I'm like, all right, I'll lock eyes with you. Like, That's fine. Like, Matt, I got I no got problem you, with this. Matt, you're like, I ain't I going you. nowhere. I'll lock with you. <laughs> but uh, but I'll, I'll I'll wrap with this. And it was something that that Coach Harbaugh, Daniel Popper from The Athletic, asked Coach Harbaugh. And it was it was, it was very interesting. He said, you know, wh as a head coach, which meeting are you in? You go offense, you go defense. And Harbaugh said, well, I'm the head coach. We stagger them. I got offense is in their meeting from eight uh, until about 9.45, while the defense is in the weight room from 8 until 9.45. And then the defense is in their meeting from 10 until 12. And the offense is in the weight room from 10 until 12. And it's like, yes, this is someone who is not going to be in the offensive room or the defensive room. It is his. The whole thing is his, and he is available 
because I think that gets lost to me, you know, and, and I can't speak to it. You can speak to it. Like I said, we'll wrap with this low, but if you have a head coach that's only in the offensive meetings, cause he's an offensive play caller or something, how does the defense feel? If he's a defensive yeah. guy, he's only in the defensive meetings. How does the offense feel? But when you have someone that is present, not just in attendance, but he is present and his presence is felt and he has control over everything. And I don't know if that's the way it works for most teams, but it certainly feels like nowadays you have someone who is a specialist on one side of the football. And it appears as though Jim Harbaugh, even though he's a former quarterback and he's got the card when he's calling offense and Jesse Minner's calling defense, that he is fully invested in every single individual on both sides of the ball and makes a concerted effort to ensure that they know that. You got to love that. And I think that's one of those things that Bill Parcells would do. He was like, you know, make sure you go in each meeting and spend time. But I'm going to tell you right now, what Harbaugh's doing by the weight room, saying, okay, when defense is meeting, the offense is in the weight room. I think that's I think that's unreal. I think that's great. And all defense is in the weight room. Guess what? The offense is meeting. I think now you have a coach that's engaged on both sides of the ball, giving them equal amount of time. And I hate it. You know, as a player, you're like, oh, my God, head coach is in here. And you stood up a little straighter. You're paying attention a little more. It brings that, you know, that conviction. Because just like a mom and dad, me and you talk about all the time, you know, you knew you could get away a little bit usually with mom than dad. And like, okay, dad's here. Oh, wait, wait till your dad right. get home. And that's what Harbaugh is going to be. It's like, okay, daddy's in these meetings. You better sit up. You better have your notebook. You better be looking alert. You better not be falling asleep. You better have your ass up. You better have your cup of coffee. You better be taking notes because daddy's here, baby. He's here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, I'll close with this, Lo. Uh, I, I, we asked, uh, Ben Herbert was asked about, you know, what, what is it about Harbaugh? How, how did, you know, six years and now you uproot your family from Michigan, bring them out to Southern California. You said it took you no time at all to make that decision. What is it? And he gave a very elongated answer, obviously very thankful for, for, for Coach for basically giving him this reputation and these contracts and this money that he's earning for his family to support them, all of that. But then he said, the one thing that stuck out the most in that answer was, he said, Ted, Coach is Ted, there every day. There every day. He goes, he goes and, and some coaches aren't there every day. Some coaches are. He goes, but the one thing I will tell you about Coach Harbaugh is, he is there every day and you don't have to go looking for him. You know exactly where he's going to be. I know exactly where coach is going to be. And our our philosophies, our approach, our commitment aligns in that. He said, I believe that is the foundation for success is consistency and knowing exactly where someone's going to be, when they are going to be there. Because if you need them, you don't need to go look. They are there and they are guaranteed to be there. And he said, in six years, there has never been one instance while he and Harbaugh were at Michigan together where he had to go look for Jim Harbaugh. He was wow. there every, he goes, I don't think he ever missed a single day of work. And I knew exactly where he was going to be if I ever needed anything. Wow. Um, it's, a, it's a tight ship, man. It's buttoned up. It is tight. <laughs> it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be a heck of a lot of fun to watch. And this is just, <laughs> this is just the beginning. One day of four hours of phase one, you know, we still got phase two and phase three uh, before we get into the training camp portion. So it's going to be awfully exciting, Lo. Oh, it is. And, and this just to recap kind of what we were talking about, it's that attention to details. But like you heard when Ben's talking about he was there, he's Ted, you know, he's there. You know, this guy where he's going to be there all the time. That's what this organization need. That's where it needed for a while. And now you've had yeah. some good coaches. You know that you've had some guys who know X's and O's, maybe even better than Harbaugh. But now you have a guy that's entered the room and enter this facility right. in this franchise that is going to change the dynamics, is going to change the culture, and going to have guys that are going to be dependable. So I think that's what you're hearing. Those four hours you're talking about, wow, this is different. This is intense. Because everyone is rowing their boat the same way. Everyone is going the same. This is not about anyone else. This is about the team and his mission and what Harbaugh has preached and what the ingredients for success – that's what you're seeing, Matt, and that's why it's different. That's why it's exciting. That's why it's more than just X's and O's. You're not even talking about X's and O's, Matt. Think about what you're talking about. You're not even talking about, oh, this offense is going to do that and it's going to get this. You're talking about fundamental football right. and creating an attitude and a culture that is going to permeate throughout that locker room. That's what this was about today. Man, it's about perfection, but it's about the details. How do you get this thing on the track for it to be able to be able for it to even to go first you got to get it built and that's what Harbaugh is doing he is going to change the way this team and the way the NFL views the Chargers yeah no doubt 
Uh, we said it when he got hired. You know, what? What he, before he was hired, I should say, when we were talking about which head coach do you want. He said, I want a winner. I don't care. I don't care what side of the ball. I, I, someone needs to walk through that door after all the losing and the way they've lost games that commands respect. And when the players look at him, go, that guy wins. That guy's a winner. And he can say to them, you guys were losers and you've been losers for the last few years and I'm a winner and you are not going to take that off of my resume. I will always be known as a winner and you're all going to come with me. We're all going to be winners together. We're going to make a lot of money. We have a lot of success and it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, can't wait till next week. Uh, I think next uh, next week we'll have uh, some more people made available on the eighth. So we're recording this uh, before that'll you know we'll, we'll the next episode will come on after the the next phase of media availability. So we'll have uh, another a full week of phase one and some more reactions from a couple players and some coaches and stuff. Uh, very much looking forward to it. Appreciate you, Lo. Glad you got fired up a little bit. Have a good rest of your day, man. And just some yes nos. <laughs> Yes, no. Yes, yes, no, no. There you Gotta go. All going, man, man. You better try those. I'm going to call you. Hey, listen, you... when when Coach said, you want a steel rod or you want something noodly, he did look at me when he said noodly. I was like, you know, I don't appreciate that, Coach. I'm just guy asking questions, man. I'm just, I'm just here to ask. I don't have to go out there to hit anybody, all right? I'm a little noodly, I know. You're the best, Lo. Uh, you're the best. Cheers.